This is my second video for today. This is Frank DeMore with The Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. And uh, earlier today I was talking about the prophecies concerning the sun that was bringing on us uh, the heat, the record temperatures, breaking record temperatures as you see here. This was the last part of my video that I reported on earlier today for May 30th of uh, May 31st of 2012 and uh, most people know and realize that when the temperatures go up and there's really dry arid places uh, we see that bugs uh, bugs that carry disease increase and in my earlier video I warned about different diseases that were popping up uh, all over the world and I, I said that I had uh, made documents about these diseases in my book well one of the ones that I didn't put in yet because I just saw it is uh, this new superbug that you'll see here and I'm not the one that's saying that this is a superbug as you'll see because I'm gonna go right to the link here this is a uh, an article from the uh, wired and it's called here the superbug here and so the changiest disease, poverty, immigration, and the new HIV AIDS. And this is what the bug looks like. And uh, according, you'll see that the uh, right below this picture, it says, what if a deadly epidemic was uh, bartering on almost, and almost nobody noticed? In other words, what if it was flourishing? What if it was getting... Uh, getting out there and, and affecting a lot of people and nobody noticed. Well, it says this, in the latest issue of the uh, PLOS, uh, Neglected Tropical Diseases, a distinguished group of biologists and epidemiologists and infectious disease specialists say that that's not a hypothetical question. They argue that the Changiest disease, a parasitic infection transmitted by blood-sucking insects, has become so widespread and serious while remaining largely unrecognized that it deserves to be considered a public health emergency. Expanding the uh, metaphor, they liken Changiest stealth spread to the early earlier days of H or AIDS. And this, of course, everybody knows by now or should know that AIDS is the deadliest, one of the deadliest diseases that popped up in the past year. So, it says both diseases are health uh, disparities disproportionately affecting people living in poverty. Both are chronic conditions requiring prolonged treatment courses. As with patients in the first two decades of the HIV and AIDS epidemic, most patients with changiest disease do not have access to health care facilities. Both diseases are also highly uh, stig stigmatizing, a feature that from changiest disease further complicates access to essential medicines uh, and, as well as access to the, uh, the serial diet dialogists and medical counseling so obviously it goes hand in hand when you have poor people the poor people suffer and because of the arid nations so forth like Africa and you'll see here South America uh, you'll have more of these bugs propping up and apparently this is exactly what's going on now this sounds like rhetoric after all what disease expert doesn't think that his or her disease is virtually or vitally important but the numbers that experts bring to the argument are stunning overall there have been believed to be 10 million people living with changes infection most of them in central in South America, but there are an estimated one million in the United States. Up to one third of those infected, three million are at risk. The changiest, worst complicated complications in large heart and heart failure. And wherever blood donations are tested for the uh, protozone, the blood supply as well as other or as organ transplants are at risk. So this this little bug right here can affect a lot of people. It is already affecting a lot of people and this is just one of many uh, little creatures 
that uh, are causing causing havoc. Another one of the uh, creatures that you may have read about, and I posted some time ago, was the bed bugs and how they're coming in, in bigger, stronger numbers because of the heat. That's you know the the temperatures are going up, and again, it, it it's perfect conditions for these bugs, and we get more news about it. But this is one of the signs that the Lord told us to look for. He said in the last days these things were going to happen. So again, you can make the connection between disease and the temperature rising because they all go hand in hand and they're all part of Bible prophecy. Frank DeMora here with the Last Chronicles of Planet Earth. Welcome, and I'm going to be covering some news that connects Bible prophecy with current events. And if you just found my YouTube channel, or if you're new and you may not know it, if you go to my site, which you'll see right here, you'll be able to uh, click on the link that you, when you get to the site, you'll see this link right here. You click that link and you'll be able to download my book today for free. And it, I'll, let me just tell you this. If you're looking for information, I mean detailed information about Bible prophecy and current events to show that Christ is the true Messiah, because only God can tell us all these things way in advance before they happen, and we're seeing those happen. Uh, if you want to read information about that, this is the book you can get. Now, the good part about it is you're not going to have to pay a dime for this book. I've done all the work for you. It's taken 36 years of my life to put all of this information in this book, and uh, you'll find it very interesting by just click this link, and it's a matter of seconds, and it'll be right at your fingertips. So, Let's get into these different prophecies, and we're going to combine all these different prophecies. I'm going to show you why. One of the first ones that the Lord told us was wars and rumors of wars. And you'll see it here in Matthew 24, 6, and uh, highlighted in the yellow. Now, one of the reasons, you know, we have wars, that uh, people are trying to grab land or property from somebody, either some bordering nation or peoples, uh, other reasons why we have war, uh, religious wars, just people, uh, leaders from different countries who want to have power and suit, suit their power. It could be another reason for war. But there's other reasons that they're warning about wars, and this is where the Lord told us you would hear rumors of wars. And of course, one of the rumors of wars is because of the lack of water. And uh, when you have lack of drinking water, or water in general, that obviously you need water to, to do your crops. Uh, when you have lack of water and somebody else has it, you want what they have because you don't have it. Another reason why a war can break out, and you'll see why I'm saying this through the news. Now, we know that famine, as you saw from the headline here, as you know, water problems, drought, famine, and hunger, it can all be associated with what we see that the Lord is telling us in uh, the, the book of Revelation and the scriptures that I have here. Now, in the book of Revelation, we know that, again, this is when all of these conditions are going to meet their climax. They're going to reach the, uh, the highest point. They're going to be fulfilled during the tribulation. But we are in the birth pains. We're going into very close to the beginning of the seven-year tribulation that Jesus warned about. And that's why we're starting to see the signs escalate. Now, one of the signs has to do about the Euphrates River. Now, I covered this a couple of weeks ago in my teaching in the book of Revelation, verse by verse, detailed information that the Lord, when he showed us what was going to happen during the last days. And I'm going to, again, focus very briefly on the Euphrates River because the Lord told us what was going to happen in the last days consider concerning us. So look at this, Revelation 16, 8. And the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. Now in Revelation chapter 7, verse 16, it says, Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. And the sun will not beat on them, nor any scorching heat. So we know that the sun is going to be very, very uh, uh, challenging, if you will, for the people who are living on the planet 
uh, during the tribulation period because the intense heat from the sun obviously is going to have an effect on the crops. People are going to be going hungry because of famine. People are going to be thirsty because the water supplies are going to be drying up. And uh, these are the things that the Lord told us were going to happen. And that's why we're seeing the escalation. And I'm going to be proving this in a second here, but I just wanted you to see what the Lord had told us because that's the most important part is the Lord's word. And so when he says you're going to have the scorching heat, again, I'm going to show you that that's already in the progress and it's getting worse each year. And then finally, I'm going to show you the, uh, the prophecy again. Uh, you see from Revelation, it talks about the scorching heat and the hunger and so forth. But now we're going to get to the Euphrates River prophecy. And it says, and he said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates, and the four angels who had been kept for, ready for this very hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, were released to kill a third of mankind. So again, we're starting to see he, the Lord is going, this is part and parcel for war that is coming. Now the number of the mounted troops was 200 a million, and I heard the number. So we know for a fact that in the last days, there's going to be problems with the Euphrates River. It's going to dry up. And I'm going to show you some information about this. But we also know that the Lord gave us a very specific number of an army that will come, which is the 200 million man army. And China alone today, and you'll see this documentation in my book, has an army that numbers 200 million soldiers. The exact number, by the way, that Jesus just gives to us here. And so let's take a look at Revelation 16, 12. It says, The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water, obviously in the yellow, was dried up. So again, you see how I'm connecting everything that the Lord said about what was going to take place in the last days. A large part is going to have a lot to do with the signs in the sun. Now, in Matthew 24, which I don't have up here, the Lord told us there would be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And we're starting to see those. So to start off with, let me go into the first headline here because we're talking about water problems. And so I'm going to click down here and I'm going to get right into the water problems. And uh, you'll see it says Iraq's PM warns Arab states may face water war. You remember what I said? I showed you wars and rumors of wars. Now this is one of those, uh, one of those things that could possibly cause a war. When the nation doesn't have water and they're drying up, as you can see from the picture here, as they're drying up, then there's a problem. So what does it say? Now, I, I highlighted it for you but so that you can see it a little bit better, but I'll read it. And I also put the link up at my site so that you'll be able to click the link once you go to my uh, BibleProphecyMan.com link. It says, Arab states could be headed towards a future war over water if they do not act quickly to tackle shortages. And this is uh, Malachi, the, the president who's running Iraq right now. So we know that there's definitely problems. At a, at a conference in Baghdad, he urged countries to work together in order to prevent the conflict in an arid region. So I'm not going to read the whole article for you. I just wanted to give you the, the main meat of it that there's definitely problems of what's going on but I do wanted to read this for you it says issues include a desert desertification poor water management and the need for most Arab countries to rely on the goodwill of upstream states for river water now the, what they're talking about here is they don't mention it in here but I do know what they're talking about doing my research they're talking about the Euphrates River and because the Euphrates River if you look at a map you'll see it that it's running through these, uh, these nations and Iraq is one of the nations and the Euphrates River is definitely drying up and so they need to have uh, a management to try to control this because if they can't control who's taking up the amount of water coming from the Euphrates and the Tigris River it will cause war and of course Jesus told us 
in the last days, you're going to see wars and rumors of war, and that could be one problem. Now, I want to show you here because this is going to show you a broad area in many different places where there where there's problems uh, with with water right now, and it's getting worse. I've been tracking this, and every year the situation is getting worse. But listen to what she says. Let's talk right now about a situation that's affecting millions of people around the world. Faustina Buacci is here this morning with World Vision. She's an advisor with them. Uh, good morning and thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for having me. You say that the world is facing a water crisis. I want you first of all to tell me what it is. About 780 million people still need water in the world today. For example, in West Africa, there's a food crisis going on because it hasn't rained for years. And um, lack of water is compounding the situation there. Because of that, um, children are dying from diarrheal diseases, from malaria, and um, from uh, worm infestations, and uh, malnutrition that is affecting them. Because of the lack of water too, Girls are not able to go to school. Women um, cannot do anything productive because they have to uh, work several hours to look for water for, um, the, to support their families. Yeah, we're going to take a look at some pictures. This is from Ghana. This is a dirty watering hole uh, that they're trying to, to pump at this point. You know, Faustina, you said something so key. 780 million people in the world need water. You didn't even say clean water. You say that there are places where it just simply has not rained, where there is no water. Well, I'm, I'm, I mean clean water, actually. It's clean water that people need. There's water around, but most of the water is polluted, it's dirty, it's unhygienic. There are some water sources that have these dirty, stinking turtles. Yeah. Animals compete with people um, from the same, you know water source and all that. So what I actually meant was uh, clean water, S clean, portable, safe water. I, I want to go back to some of these images. Uh, these are little boys that, that one of them held up a glass of dirty water before it's been cleaned. Now then they install a pump and the situation changes. Women, women now gathering fresh water. This is a completely different scene and it's what's needed. Um, I, I was reading in preparation for this, Faustina, that, that it takes 11 gallons of clean water, 11 gallons to produce a slice of bread. Yes, that is what uh, people in the Western world do not know that happens and this is what um, uh, people in Africa and Asia and Latin America lack. And, and these are taken for granted, but for these countries, developing countries, water is life. Everything revolves around water. When there's no water, girls can't have an education. Women can't do anything productive. The they water, are prone to violence. Water yeah. means life for all of us. Uh, March 22nd, there's a reason why you're with us today. What is the importance of this date? The importance is that we are celebrating uh, um, Two billion people having access to water, but also want to create awareness of the fact that there's still more that needs to be done. Uh, there's clean water that should be supplied everywhere. Everybody should have access to clean drinking water. All right. Uh, the movement is called waterday.org. Today is World Water Day. World Water Day held every March 22nd, recognized by the United Nations and the global community. It reminds us that much of the world still faces global water difficulties, as Faustina is sharing with us this morning. Um, why now? How, how urgent is this? You've, you've told us of the needs around the world, and, and we certainly understand that, but, but there's a tipping point that, that maybe has been passed, as I understand. Well, uh, um, a lot of NGOs and a, a lot of um, uh, governments in the Western world have supported um, delivery of um, portable water or clean water to people, but conflicts and droughts and others are being a threat to what has been done. The sustainability of um, these, the boreholes that have been drilled by World Vision in Ghana, for example, World Vision has drilled almost 2,500 boreholes and 1 million 
1.3 million people have benefited from these boreholes, but still there are thousands and millions of people in Ghana and West Africa who are being affected by the drought and all that and who need portable water, at least to be able um, to drink and to cook and also to produce gardens um, that can feed the people, uh, can feed their families whilst we wait for um, God to bring the rains. All right, Fastinabu actually. So there you have it. What essentially she is telling us is what I just got through telling you. Uh, based on what the Lord told us. And that means that we're starting to see the famines. We're starting to see, obviously, the result of drought, which comes from the sun, and uh, the lack of rain and uh, the lack of water. So all of these things are before us, and as I said, they are definitely getting worse. Now, what I did is I put up, because uh, uh, there was a, a new meeting that came from Baghdad, and you'll see the Associated Press writes about the drought there. And it says, and I did put this up a few days ago, but I'm going to tie this in. Drought and uprising are threatening to undermine the Middle East economy, Arab officials said Thursday as they discussed plans to boost the region's stability at the key of the, uh, or the start of the key of the summit in Baghdad. And so what I did here to give you the meat of the article in this, in case you missed it a few days ago, and it said this in one of the quotes, As in Iraq, where the Euphrates and the Tigris River are drying up, water resources also are strapped elsewhere across the Middle East. So there's a lot of regions that are in this drought situation. Uh, much of what she is talking about, but she's talking about Africa, but we're start we're seeing the drought problem in the Middle East as well. And it's causing problems and fears of water uh, wars and instability in the region. So let me get into another one now. There's a uh, and I'm gonna have the links once you get into my site you won't be able to click obviously at the YouTube channel but you go to my site you will be able to do that and you'll see there's other regions that are having these problems it says uh, for example it says as the summer peaks so have the woes in Gorgor Gorgorgan and Millennium City has been witnessing eight to ten hours of power cuts a day even as it grapples with its worst ever water crisis with the supply plunging to an all-time low of 15 percent of the annual volume in many areas on sunday the water shortage affecting as many as 65 residential colonies in new uh again and it has been getting worse for the past two weeks and i've been living in the city for at least 11 years and i have never seen such uh, I've never seen such a water and then it goes on to say these water problems but I'll let you click there to read the whole article so there's just another region that they're suffering with the same kind of problems as you see suffering in obviously the Middle East and in Africa now here's another one the headline Pakistan Pakistan among countries facing water shortages now this gets critical because Pakistan uh, has a very very large number of people uh, over a billion people there as well as China now I didn't put any information because of time constraints about China but China has been facing a drought for the uh, three or four years and they are also in a critical position with water drinking water so let's read about Pakistan though because they do have major problems as Pakistan is among the 17 countries that are currently facing water shortages I hope you read that listen to what I'm saying because sometimes I read it too fast but 17 countries right facing a water shortage as when I see this I remember right away I remember what Jesus told us and not only did he say that they were coming but what did he say to us he said keep on the watch in other words if you're looking if you're watching if you're doing what the Lord said and you're watching these things you will see them and we are seeing them and that's an indication that he is coming for us soon because that's what he told us now with an estimated 44 percent of the population 
without access to safe drinking water, and up to 90% of the population even lacks such access in rural areas. With decrease of quality or quantity, the quality of water is also deteriorating badly by municipal uh, industrial and agriculture waste. And what's happening, like you heard the woman who was talking about in Africa, they're polluting the water. And so if, if we're already facing water shortages because of the drought, and you start polluting at the water that we have, you'll see that the problem is compounded. Now as one of the, as one indication of the intensity of the problem, it is estimated that about 200,000 children in Pakistan die every year of diarrhea diseases alone. And of course, if you read Matthew, Mark, and uh, Luke, you'll see that one of the last day signs are diseases. And there are a lot of diseases, and I outline all of these diseases in my book, diseases, super, what they call super diseases have, have come up. It, getting back, it says, water is essential for human beings to survive, obviously, but at the same time, water is a, a scarce commodity. And it, believe me, if you knew what I knew, it's getting a lot more scarce. And I'm trying to give you as much information in limited time as I can. Ex access to the safe drinking water supply is not only a basic need, for the uh, prerequisite for a healthy life, it is also a fundamental human right. And despite being in abundance, almost 97.41% of the water on Earth is saline, and only the remaining 2.59% is fresh water, 0.3% uh, is the rivers and the lakes, which are not only the source, but also from where most of the daily uh, water requirements are met. So the abundance of water is is not that great because most of the ocean is salt and you can't drink salt water. And uh, But what I've done here, I listed for you, uh, and you'll see at the bottom of this, you'll see a, a link like this at the bottom of all these articles, but I showed you different places around the world that are having major problems with drought and water supplies. For example, uh, in the United States, it says 95 percent of the United States fresh water is underground. As farmers in the Texan High Plains pump groundwater faster than rain replenishes it, uh, because they're in a drought and they have been, the water tables are dropping. North America's largest aquifer, the Aguela is being depleted at a rate of 12 billion cubic meters a year. Total depletion to date amounts to some 325 BCMs, a volume equal to the annual flow of the 18 Colorado rivers. The Aguela stretches from the Texas to South Dakota and waters one-fifth of the U.S. irrigated land. And many farmers in the High Plains are now turning away from irrigating, irrigated agriculture as they become aware of the hazards of over-pumping and realize water is not in endless supply. So problems right there. Now heading into Mexico. Mexico is shrinking because of the amount of water being pumped out from beneath its foundations. In one of the largest and most populous cities in the world. It is once a lush land of lakes, but over the past 500 years, the lakes have been drained and the surrounding forest chopped down. Now, as the city grew in size, the water problem magnified. With no adequate drainage system, today's rainwater mixes with sewage and is used for irrig irrigation. The city is now at a serious risk of running out of clean water. An estimated 40% of the city's water is lost through leaky pipes built in the uh, turn of the century. So each nation is facing their own problems. And as I said, if you've been keeping up to date and if you've been coming to my site over the years, you'll see, uh, you, you would have seen all of the news and how it has increased, uh, magnified the problem over the years. Now, here we go into, uh, let's go into Europe. More than half of Europe's cities 
are exploiting groundwater at unsustainable rates. In other words, they, they can't get it out fast enough. Chronic water shortages, again, in Europe they're having this problem, are already affecting 4.5 4, 4 million people. So that, that is a lot of people. So we see that uh, there's problems in Europe. Now, West Africa, we already heard what was going on in Africa in the video, but let's see what they say here. It says, when the water levels of Africa's huge rivers drop, Whole economies suffer. Guyana, for example, has become totally reliant on the, on the hydroelectric output. And these are the dams where the water flows. When you have a lot of water, you get a lot of, obviously, you generate electricity that helps everybody out. But that's not the case here because the water level is dropping down. One of the poorest countries on the planet is dependent on the, the uh, river Niger which flows from Ghana through the Mali and Nigeria for food, water, and transport. But great stretches of the river are now facing environmental catastrophe as the result of, again, pollution. And we do know that there's going to be a large, very large amount of the rivers that are going to definitely be polluted when you read the book of Revelation, when the Lord starts to pour out the, the judgments, one of the judgments will fall on the rivers. And uh, it is going to, anybody who drinks from those rivers, when this judgment pours down, they will die from it. And uh, we'll, we'll know that uh, millions of people will be dying during that time in the tribulation. So in the, uh, Africa is definitely in their own problems and again here we go in the Turkey Turkey has been accused by Syria and Iraq of diverting much or diverting them of much needed water as it continues to build a series of dams along the Euphrates and the Tigris it is also embarking an ambitious project to sell water from its uh, Megavet River in the Middle East. So here's definitely a problem since the Lord told us that the Euphrates River was going to dry up and when it did this 200 million man army would walk across it. Now when you read my book I'll give you the details about all of these different uh, dams that are being built. There's 21 different dams that have been built and actually Turkey has the ability today if they want because they did this a while back they could actually turn the handle and stop the flow of the Euphrates River so technically if you want to say this now the Lord did tell us in the prophecy above let me go back there because this is you know it's really critical when you're understanding what's going on he told us that the Euphrates River was going to dry up all right now we know that there's going to be problems with the Sun so we know that in part the water systems are drying up but in the case as what we see with Turkey here let me get back to it um, Turkey has the ability uh, to actually not even wait for the Sun to completely dry up the Euphrates River although there are places right now where you could walk across the Euphrates River it's so shallow and so what I'm sh showing you here is Turkey can turn the nozzle and stop the flow of the river Euphrates so that an army can actually cross the Euphrates River today. So either way, whether it's going to be done by the sun drying up the Euphrates River or man-made uh, problems where they shut the flow of the water off. And of course, there's been much tension from Syria and Iraq and you'll read all about this in my book but the, here's the bottom line either way the Euphrates River is drying up it can dry up by the Sun or it can be turned off today but this is exactly what the Lord told us was going to happen and it's not a surprise to me because I know that Christ is real he is the true Lord the true Savior of this world and that's why we're seeing the things taking place and that's why these same nations are talking about water wars wars in rumors of wars just like Jesus Christ said now here's another one get back to the Middle East water is the most a precious source in the Middle East more important even than oil 
and competition of the water from the, the River Jordan was a major cause of the 1967 war. So the Lord told us uh, that, you know, you're going to have wars and rumors of wars. He didn't actually have to spell out you're going to have a water war, but in our generation we see the, the, the product of what brings out wars, and obviously this is one of those for the 1967 war. As populations increase, water becomes more scarce, aggravating regional tensions. The Lebanese have long accused Israel of having designs on the waters of the uh, river Latania, and the Syria accuses it of being reluctant to withdraw from the banks of the Sea of Galilee, the source of up to 30% of Israel is Israel's water. Now the Israelis in the West Bank use four times as much water as their Palestinian neighbors. Well, one, one of the things that people should know is Israel is supplying more food than anyone else because they are the, the experts in doing, uh, in, in growing, in agriculture, in growing out of the desert using a very limited amount of water to do this. And so they are the best at it. So when people don't have and somebody else does have, obviously the people who don't have, they want it. And this is what we see coming from the Palestinians because they see that Israel has all of these things. They turn the desert into uh, a rose, if you will. And uh, this, all of this information, by the way, is in my book under uh, the blessings of Israel that you see what God has said, what he was going to do to the nation Israel when they became a nation again. And everything that he told us, foretold about that nation has come to pass. And you really need to see what he told us. And when you see how he fulfilled it, it's I believe that it's really going to blow you away and you're going to understand that Jesus is definitely the Messiah. Now the Ariel Sea in the Central Asia was one of the world's fourth biggest island sea and one of the world's most fertile regions. But economic mismanagement has turned the area into tos toxic desert. The two rivers feeding uh, the Sea of Amar Dura and the Shar Dura were diverted into Soviet uh, scheme to grow cotton in the desert. And between 1962 and 1974, the level of the aerial sea fell 16 meters. The surrounding region now has one of the highest infant mortalities in the world, causing, obviously, when you see here, it's causing cancer. You talk about pollution. Uh, cancers, chemical blowing off, dried seabed are common. So there's a lot of things associated with the, the lack of water, pollution, death, disease, obviously. Now the Nile River, and you'll see that it, it just goes on and on. And for time constraints, I can't read all of them. So what I'm going to do at this point, just show you that some of the problem areas and hopefully you'll be able to go to my site just click the link and you'll be able to read all about it Zimbabwe is in deep problems and this is uh, the southern Africa is the most overused river systems in the world major problems there in the Ganges uh, this the uh, sacred Hindu river in the Ganges is so depleted that the uh, sub the Sabarban wetlands and the mangrove forests in Bangladesh are seriously threatened. And again, when you get this, you're, you're starting to mess with people's foods, drinking, and uh, the scarcity caused many, many problems. Mongolia and China. Remember I talked about China a little bit. It says all three rivers feeding China's northern plain are are severely polluted, damaging health and limiting irrigation. The lower reaches of the Yellow River, which feeds China's most important farming region, ran dry for 226 days in 1997. And it's still doing that. It's still drying up. And when you get to my book, you'll see the latest information past the 1991, obviously. And then you have Australia. If you've been watching what's going on in Australia for the last three or four years, they've been in a major drought. They're having the same kind of problems 
as was told in the uh, in the video that we saw and then of course March uh, meant let me get to this I'm going to just pull this one right up for us you'll see this March has meant 6,000 weather records broken and what does this mean I'm not talking about cold I'm talking about heat records that have been breaking and over the course of these different years of, that I've been tracking uh, each year we're starting to see uh, massive uh, massive amounts of uh, water drying up because of the intense heat that's coming out and here this article talks about these 6,000 heat records now just a couple of days ago there were 200 more heat records broken in the United States in one day alone but let's see what it says here it says we've seen an amazing historic run on record warmth in March 2012 and it's been the talk of towns from Minnesota to Michigan to Tennessee to Georgia for a couple of weeks now and first consider the sheer number of the daily record highs either tied or broken over the past two weeks the counts in the table below are courtesy of the National Climate Data Center since March 9th the counts from March the 23rd are still being tabulated and will be posted later but look at the records here and you'll see all of these things it is just it's incredible all the different records that are being broken it says if you pull out your calendar and add the numbers up from March 1st through March 22nd the total exceeds 6,000 this speaks to the widespread nature of the longevity of the warm spell and geez, I just pray that you're listening to what the Lord is saying because we're seeing the results of what he said right now. And it's all, by the way, we're seeing all of the signs taking place at the same time. And that's exactly what Jesus said to look for. Now, by the way, there have been only about 250 daily record lows during that same time. The ratio is roughly 24 record highs for every record low. In a typical March, particularly in the nation's northern tier, you may see perhaps one or perhaps two days of record warmth before a sharp cold front brings the spring teas to the uh, uh, screeching halt. Not so in March of 2012. Now when considering monthly record highs, meaning the warmest temperature on record for the month of March according to the NCDC there have been 430 such monthly record highs or records highs tied or broken and so it gets into the different places now when we're talking about Minnesota and Chicago these places uh, I can remember when it wasn't that hot and it was because they're by the lakes and it was cooling them off but that is changing and the records are being broken in even these states and I'm gonna let you read all this information because it goes on and on it gives you a lot of information as I said I'm giving you the link that you can be able to read this if you're interested but here's the bottom line I'm giving you the meat of the story and the meat of the story is Jesus Christ gave us all of this information now the question is this do you believe it if you don't believe this you probably don't even believe in Jesus as the Messiah And if you don't believe in Jesus as the Messiah this is what I want to prepare you for let me go back because you're you're gonna have to prepare yourself for this you're gonna have to prepare yourself for revelation not only this prophecy here that has to do with the army that will cross the Euphrates River drying up but you will face the intensity from the scorching Sun the heat from the Sun you're going to be facing severe hunger like you have never seen before in your life and Jesus said when it happens nobody's ever seen anything like it before nobody's ever gonna see anything like it again when the tribulation begins and so you're gonna be faced with hunger like you've never had before thirst like you've never seen before drought famine pestilence and everything else associated with the plagues and the vials and the bowls and being poured out during the tribulation period 
God is giving you this information, including the wars that will come. In a large part, there's going to be a lot of wars that will no doubt be fought over the lack of water. And many people during the tribulation period, when, when, the, when the lack of water hits, and wherever the people are, whatever water is left, people are going to be fighting over that water to get to that water. It's not going to be a pretty sight. So if you don't receive Jesus and the love that he has shown us now by telling us all these things, and he's telling us all these things to get us out of the tribulation, doesn't want us to even be there. And so you can have protection if you come in to the Lord's care. In other words, receive him as your savior. And I would say, do it today. Just ask him to be with you today. Ask him to forgive you today. Ask him to just encompass you from now on. Ask him to show you where to go for fellowship because the Lord told us in the New Testament, don't forsake the gathering the saints, especially as you see that day approaching. And if there's anything that I can do to help you find a church, to find somewhere where you can learn about the Lord and learn from the word of the Lord, I'd be more than happy to do that just to email me. My email is at the top of my post. So thank you very much for allowing me into your home. And I, I challenge you, if you want to see that Jesus is the true Messiah, read all the information that I put into this book because all of the information that I took I took all of the scriptures, the prophecies out of the Bible, and then all I did was connect it to what we are actually seeing to show you that there is definitely a connection and we are already in the last days. Now, we haven't made it to the tribulation yet, but if you refuse Christ, you will, you will go into the tribulation. Please listen to what the Holy Spirit has shown you today.